coming up on the program tonight, the teens and younger who die in police pursuits. Why do they drive as if they have nothing to lose? But first up tonight, Paula Bennett says if she was still a minister, she would expect Housing New Zealand to go back and re-look at the cases of tenants who were evicted for meth-contaminated homes and consider apologies in some cases and even compensation in some. That's a big call from the person who was the social housing minister between 2014 and 2016 when hundreds of tenants were evicted from state houses after traces of methamphetamine were found, sometimes at levels now known to constitute no risk whatsoever. Yesterday, a report by the government's top science advisor found there's never been a documented case of someone getting sick from third-hand exposure to meth and that a moral panic around meth itself is effectively behind our methamphetamine testing rules that were flawed and heavy-handed. So, what does Paula Bennett think now in light of Sir Peter Gluckman's report? Oh, I welcome it. Look, I've always had concerns um, about the level of testing once I understood it, to be fair. I just didn't think that the 0 0.5 sounded right. I questioned health in um, particular who had set that standard, questioned Housing New Zealand numerous times, got the standards authority involved who raised it. Uh, and so to have this report from Gluckman is, um, I think, actually welcomed. None of us wanted houses empty that didn't need to be. Although if we go back to early in 2016, your rhetoric then was much stronger and very different. You were welcoming evictions, you were uh, congratulating Housing New Zealand for effectively a zero tolerance policy, and you were saying the people who were attached to homes that had methamphetamine contamination were damaging Housing New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's really fair in those early days. As you can understand, I got advice that there was um, potential danger to particularly children who might ha uh, be prone to asthma or skin infections. Um, I was told that. I obviously took that at the, at the advice that I got and, and was horrified that people might be smoking pee in houses. Let's, you know, I'm not going to shy away from that. Then I started seeing reports, and I remember one in particular from an expert who said you can just about get more pee residue you off a five dollar note than you could off some of these houses at 0 0.5 and so that raised alarm bells for me and made me raise genuine questions with health and with housing New Zealand and uh, and then bringing in standards authority who then came back eventually last year with a report at 1.5 I now hear from Gluckman that it could be 10 times higher than that and so I welcome it. But you've got, I mean, I took the advice that I was given from experts, of which I wasn't. But by mid-2016, experts really were blowing the whistle. Dr Nick Kim on Checkpoint in June, calling it a moral panic and saying, and I quote, the first point that you might plausibly get a risk is about 25 times the guideline value. Russell Brown. For matters of substance, the Drug Foundation in August 2016 rigorously, factually deconstructing the case for the 0.5 limit. Benedict Collins saying Housing New Zealand were ignoring repeated warnings that the eviction guidelines were being misapplied. If you saw all that stuff, if you had concerns, why didn't you call for the evictions to cease until there was consensus or certainty? Well, I, um, I definitely raised um, those, I think, legitimate concerns that I, I read about and that I saw, um, but I couldn't. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Housing New Zealand are a crown entity, and so I questioned, I gave, uh, I showed them the reports that I saw from other um, experts, and as I say, they erred on the side of caution too, you know, far too far from, um, from my belief as well. But if I can't take the advice that I'm given from Housing New Zealand, the um, Ministry of Health and then the Standards Authority, then who am I as the expert to be standing in and saying at what level I felt that it should be? But so, if you, but if you, know, you had this disquiet, the if you had this disquiet, yep. if you were concerned, why weren't the evictions stopped until there was greater certainty around third-hand contamination? because they were genuinely concerned about the health of people in those homes. Including children. So in their, in their, yeah, well in their view, there was potentially more risk for people to be in homes that may be, that were contaminated. And now we find out that the level was so low that it may not have been dangerous. 
but they erred on the side of caution. What did that know, caution look like? Where, Forgive me for interrupting, but what did that caution look like? We're talking about people who are sufficiently vulnerable to be in a housing New Zealand home. They were evicted. Mm -hmm. They were blacklisted for 12 months. They had, and I have in front of me, uh, tenancy tribunal awards against Not them of as much as $34,000 in one case yeah. in Ashburton. They had nowhere yeah, look, I mean, to live, enormous debt. Yeah, you'd have to take that up with Housing New Zealand. I mean, I had nothing to do with evictions ever. Um, in fact, it would have been inappropriate for a minister to have been involved at that level. And so that was their policy. It was set by them, and that's what they administered. Uh, and so you would have to take it up with them. I've got to say that for, um, for the information that I received, most of those people were not blacklisted for 12 months because um, they couldn't prove that it was them that may have contaminated the house. You had nothing so to do with evictions have... ever? No, I didn't evict people ever. So, so in, the, in evicted, the New Zealand Herald in March 2016, you're quoted as saying if a property is found to be contaminated, the tenancy will be terminated. That's a verbatim quote from you. Well, that's, the, that's Housing New Zealand's policy. So I was reading out their policy. Of course I had nothing to do with individual um, evictions, John. That would just be completely inappropriate for a minister. The development in Christchurch, evictions, huge media coverage and, and a really strong sense from you that you felt that the response was appropriate. Those were brand new homes and uh, they said that they found um, meth use in those homes afterwards. And I'm sorry, John, but it is illegal to take meth in this country. And, uh, you know, those were housing New Zealand homes. So it was appropriate to evict them? It was appropriate to evict no, them? I'm not going to go down there. I don't know. That was no, no, years ago. Was, it, was it appropriate to evict them? I don't them? think that the level that they were using then, we're, I'm pleased that it's been proven now. And you can slate, try and slate it back to me all you like, as I'm saying, what I knew in March... 2016, as those experts that you quite rightly identified started coming out, I um, I could see that there was another side to it. To it, I questioned officials and three different government organisations repeatedly, and I was given assurances that that was where it stood. And as a minister, it would have been inappropriate for me to have gone the other way and said, "I think you should leave them in there," because in my opinion, it's safe. Well, I'm not an expert. And I think you would be absolutely slamming me if a child had then got sick or uh, had been, you know, or something dramatic had happened there. So that wasn't my call to make. What needs to happen now then, given that we collectively got this so very, very wrong? What needs to happen to the people who were evicted? What needs to happen to the people who had tenancy tribunal findings and costs awarded against them of, in some cases, thousands and even tens of thousands of dollars? Are they owed yeah, compensation? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I would have to be getting that kind of advice um, and seeing all of the information and knowing what the cost would be and going back and looking at it. And they would all be individual. So some of them may well be over the new standard that, um, that Professor Gluckman is recommending. Some may not be. I don't have that kind of information at my fingertips. If they're not, kind of if they are at what now seems to be and the science is in fact telling us it is, the absurdly low standard of 0.5 or just above it. And they were evicted and they lost their home and they lost their reputation and they had findings, financial costs against them awarded by the Tenancy Tribunal. What are those people owed? Oh, I think that certainly I'd be expecting Housing New Zealand to go back and look at it if I was the Minister. And with a view to what? Well, to a view to being um, fair and reasonable in the light of new information. So, including you know, apologies, sure including compensation? Well, I would certainly be wanting to look at it all and, um, and see individuals, individual cases and make sure that actually it has been fair and reasonable. With the, with, with the potential for an apology and or compensation? Yeah, yep, certainly, and I'm sure there might be, um, there might be cases like that. Paula Bennett, former Social Housing Minister.